Okay, so today we're going to be doing a lecture on peptides versus steroid hormones. Um, and it'll just be a very basic overview. What we really want to get to um, is the G protein receptor, right? Um, so to start off with, uh, we're just going to see that peptide hormones um, are protein hormones. So they're made out of amino acids and steroids. Hormones are obviously made out of steroids, um, which look kind of like this. So they have um, these four uh, cyclic alkanes, okay? um, and then it has this uh, R group at the top. Um, so we know that steroids are obviously going to be hydrophobic, and peptides are going to be hydrophilic. So remember that when we had um, our cell membrane, right? We had our cell membrane that was something like this, that with the hydrophilic heads on the outside and the hydrophobic tails on the inside. So pretty much our cell membrane is going to be hydrophobic, okay? which means that hydrophobic materials like steroids can pass right through. All right? So they can pass right through the plasma membrane and get down um, into the cell. All right? um, so we know that this can pass through the membrane and this one cannot pass. Okay, so because these can pass through, there will be a nuclear receptor that they bind to. So they bind to a nuclear receptor, okay, versus peptides which bind to a cell surface receptor. Um, and this is the, the G protein receptor that I was mentioning before, okay? So the, the ultimate goal, because that we are um, activating some type of nuclear receptor, so it's in the nucleus, um, it it was, it's going to affect something in the nucleus, which is DNA. So it's going to affect DNA transcription, right? Um, so it'll actually affect cellularly how many enzymes are produced. Because remember, transcription will ultimately lead to translation, which will make proteins, okay? Versus peptides will just um, activate enzymes. So they'll activate enzymes, and these enzymes can do a variety of things. Um, and these this activation of enzymes can also be an inactivation. So you can either alter um, an enzyme so that it's activated or deactivated. Uh, but we're not so much working at the transcription level. Right? Um, and so steroid hormones are going to be very long term. So they're, they're long term um, because we're working on transcription. So it's going to take a little bit longer versus working just on the enzyme, it's going to be um, very short. It's going to be very uh, short term, short term changes, and it's going to be very fast, right? So it's going to work very fast, but it's only going to be for that short amount of time versus um, steroid hormones. It's going to be a very long period of time um, that's going to take, so it's going to be a, a very slow process in comparison to peptide hormones. Okay, so that now that we have compared the peptide versus steroid hormones, um, and we remember that the peptide hormone uses this cell surface receptor, we're going to see how that cell surface receptor works. Um, and it's called the G protein. And a G protein receptor, okay? Um, so this that I've drawn here is the plasma membrane, okay? So this is the plasma membrane, um, and this specifically is the G protein receptor, and this is the adenyl cyclase. Uh, and we'll see how those two work together, okay? Um, so remember this is for peptides, so these little circles that I'm drawing, um, those are going to be our uh, peptide chains or our proteins, okay? Um, so these are going to be our protein hormones that bind to the receptor, the G protein receptor that's on the cell surface, okay? And what that's going to do, there's this little um, subunit right here. It's going to activate this subunit. Um, so now we have this GTP um, with the alpha subunit. Um, and it's going to come and going to bind to this adenyl cyclase. Okay. So what's going to happen after that is ATP um, is going to be hydrolyzed to cyclic AMP. Remember, this is very important, cyclic AMP. We have to remember that. Um, and so this is going to go on to activate cyclic AMP um, dependent protein kinase. So cyclic AMP dependent protein kinase. Okay. And what this is going to do um, is going to have an enzyme and it's going to either activate or deactivate it by phosphorylating it. Okay? So we can see that this whole process, this G protein receptor, will work like a cascade. So if you ever see the term cascade, um, this G protein is what's, what it's doing. Um, and we can see that it will work very 
uh, one little receptor, one little um, protein will go on to act on many, many, many um, uh, different molecules and it'll, it'll have a cascade effect. So that's why it's so rapid. It's so rapid because one little protein um, can have a great effect. Right? And it'll affect it by uh, phosphorylating these enzymes. Right? Um, so yeah, just, just remember basically how this will work. Um, it's fairly important on the MCAT, not so much memorizing what happens, not so much memorize that, oh, there's an alpha, beta, gamma, um, but we should recognize some of these terms like cyclic AMP, the cyclic AMP dependent protein kinase, and the G protein. Um, everything else is kind of just um, added information, but especially what we saw on the first page will be very important for the MCAT.